you all for joining us here today. Um, this training is for the fiscal year 21 high frequency communications equipment program reimbursement and modification training. My name is Cindy Logan and I'm the division chief over the high frequency communications equipment program here at Cal OES. Today with us, we have Al Hardway. He's the unit chief over the program. And we also have Nick Martin, who is our program representative. With that said, Nick has a few things that um, he would like to say for some housekeeping items. So I'll let Nick take it away. Uh, hello, everyone. First things first, this presentation is being recorded and will be available uh, for on demand viewing later. Uh, everyone who has joined is uh, in on listen mode. We cannot see or hear you, and the raise hand feature is off as well. We do encourage you to share your questions throughout the presentation uh, using the chat box feature. There will be a questions portion in the presentation where we'll answer all chat box questions and unmute people so that we can unanswer any so that we can answer any verbal questions. Uh, and with that, I believe we are ready to start with the presentation. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Al Hardoy, and um, like Cindy said, this is the uh, High Frequency Communications Equipment Program. We're going to review a uh, report of expenditures and requests for funds report form 2-201 and the grant subaward modification form 2-223 and, um, and the processes uh, needed and related. And in case you um, are recently back from a long, long trip, today's May 24th, uh, 2022. So the goals of the presentation are um, to review the guidelines for uh, grant subaward fiscal management, the tools and processes for submitting uh, payable 201, and the tools and processes for submitting a modification 2-223 and the common errors to avoid. Um, we'll start out with uh, the grant subrecipient, you, you folks, um, your responsibilities. Um, first, adhere to any special conditions I don't believe that that will apply to very many of you. A special condition is basically uh, maybe something was missing on the application and um, it wasn't a showstopper. So we went ahead and uh, uh, processed the application, but we put in a special condition to uh, resolve the problem uh, within a certain time period. Like I said, probably uh, only applies to one or two of you. Um, another responsibility on you is uh, to submit a report of expenditure and request due the 2201, the invoice, basically uh, timely. And, and then on your side, track those expenditures. And as we get closer to the end of the grant, the uh, closeout deadlines. Uh, timely submission of a 201. Um, you're all uh, considered local governments. You know, there's a there's a few of you that are uh, JPAs, and um, we're going to consider you a uh, local government as well. And so your submissions are quarterly. So the uh, first quarter is April 1st through June 30th, and your uh, submission period would be 30 days following that. So that means the month of July that that we would need to see your um, invoices. First things first. Um, some of you have gotten your grant subaward approvals. The the rest of you they're uh, soon to come. And part of the grant um, package that you submitted was a face sheet or in the future, if you need a modification, then you'll refer to that. And a signature authorization form, uh, budget pages, and any special conditions, if any. Um, and then on your side, you need a general ledger 
that uh, tracks your expenditures and uh, pr your program specialist contact information and email um, should you need any assistance. Um, this is a budget summary report, which we will be sending to you monthly. Um, I apologize, it's for a different program, uh, but basically it um, should have the key, the key pieces here, which um, on your budget, you had three sections, uh, personal services, operating expenses, and equipment. Most of you had uh, the equipment section um, as your primary uh, piece of the budget. Uh, the column uh, budget amount is what your uh, budget amount is, your allocation, which is for most of you, it's 60,000 or thereabouts. Um, having submitted some invoices, you would see what you have been paid and, and expended. And then the balance column would indicate what your balance is. This particular budget summary report with the column pending is indicating that there's an invoice that has been received or is being processed for 8500 and then the next column over is the pending balance that um, uh, would be in place should that invoice be um, approved and, and processed. Where do we get the forms? Um, we, uh, you want to go to Cal OES dot ca dot gov um, and then on the right is cal oes divisions which will take you to this page you want to scroll down to grants management and then scroll down to helpful links and um, click on forms that'll take you to this page which um, lists all our forms. You always want to go out to this page and get your forms in whatever form you need because uh, you're going to get the current version. And um, grants processing needs to have the current version. So remember that like a mantra, always get the current version of the form. So in this case, we're scrolling down to a 2-201 report of expenditures and request for funds. And this is what the form looks like. Looks a little busy, but it's actually not too complicated. Um, Hi, Al, just a moment, sorry. Uh, people in the chat are saying they cannot see your screen for some reason. Um, somebody says they can see the screen. Some people can't, not sure what the issue is. Um, do you have any direction on that? It seems most people can see it, so I'm sorry if you can't see it. Sounds like it's a, a setting you may need to change on your end. We will be sending um, the video, right, Nick? Yes, yeah, so after the presentation is over, we will be sending the recording out, and that should uh, not have any of these issues. Okay, I apologize about that. I think we're good to go, Al. OK, um, so the uh, the top section of the uh, 201 has basically your uh, information and the grant information. Um, number one is the grant subaward number, which uh, indicates what grant it is, what the fund source is, and then the last four numbers are specific to your agency. They. I, they are the identifier uh, for our system on who you are. And then the subrecipient name um, and the payment mailing address are on your face sheet. Those are the names and the payment address that you reported to us on your application. Those are in our system and those need to be those need to match what you've submitted to us. 
uh, the grant subaward number. The our grant is FH2101, and then the last four numbers, like I said, is exclusive to your agency and would be located on uh, virtually all the documents uh, in your application uh, approval. Uh, your subrecipient name uh, is specific, and the payment type. Uh, most of these, um, most of these uh, lines are drop downs, and uh, so for the payment type, it's a drop down that's going to give you a reimbursement, which is your uh, the one you're primarily going to use. Additional, which is if you. Um, need to let's say you you uh, invoiced for the first quarter but you found out that there was some additional um, expenditures that you didn't uh, include then you can do uh, an additional for that time period after the fact an abatement is where you owe money back and there's a process for that uh, match doesn't apply to you and then final payment is your final invoice and that would trigger uh, grants processing and the system that you are done with the grant and we will not be receiving any more invoices. Uh, the program code is a drop down. It'll list all the um, grants that are uh, being uh, offered or worked on. And one of them will be FH High Frequency Communications Equipment Program. That's the one you want to select. The billing period will be quarterly. And uh, like I said, the first, qu first quarter will be uh, April 1st through June 30th. Your payment mailing address is critical that it matches what was on the face sheet because that's what's in our system. That's where the check's going to go. Uh, the fund year is 2021 and the fund source is PSC1. Here's a snapshot of uh, the lower section or the middle section, I should say, of the 201. Um, like I said, the uh, the fund year and the fund source is a drop down, and then um, and then this is where you would put your amount requested. In this example. What they're saying is they're claiming a thousand dollars from the personal personnel section and then a thousand dollars from the equipment section, uh, totaling two thousand. And um, you would enter the initial amounts and then it auto sums from there. So this covers pretty much what I said. Match does not apply and advance. Nobody got an advance, so those two don't. Don't apply. Um, so once again, this is an example of uh, uh, requesting a thousand dollars for the personnel section, thousand dollars for the equipment, two thousand dollars is what's being requested. You want to use whole numbers. Don't uh, don't put any cents in. That'll uh, create rounding errors. And then the final section of the 201 is is very critical. This is where a lot of problems come from. Is uh, part of the application process um, forms. One of them was 2-103, uh, which you listed all your authorized signers. And um, so be sure that you sign the 201 with uh, signers that, that have been approved that you've submitted uh, that are in our system. And that's that's what it looks like. Uh, where you sign. So there's a financial side and there's a programmatic side. So um, you've got the 201 created and uh, you feel free at the point if if you want uh, send an unsigned copy to um, the HF communications email uh, and we can review it. Make sure it's correct. Um, 
and the information uh, that you want to review is the grant sub award number. The funds requested are available. Remember budget summary, so you should compare that um, if you're going to claim that thousand dollars from the personnel section that there is actually a thousand dollars balance in that section. Um, whole dollar amounts and then the signatures match the um, current authorization forms. You want to send the completed reimbursement form to this email. VS grants payments at calloways.ca.gov and any abatements um, need to be mailed in because basically an abate abatement is an overpayment so you are sending us a check and you would send the invoice with the check to that Cal OES accounting address. These addresses are listed on the top left of the 201 form. Couple of common questions is when can I expect to receive my payment? So Cal OES has 30 calendar days from a receipt date to complete the payment approval process. Then after that process, it goes to the state controller's office and they have 15 days, calendar days. So 45 days is a typical processing time for an invoice that's been submitted. Um, you're welcome to contact uh, the program specialist at any point and, and we can usually determine where it is in the process and, and give some rough estimate on when you could expect to see something. And this 45 days does not include mailing time. Um, if there is a problem with the invoice, then what will be sent out is an invoice dispute notification. Um, and that'll be sent out to the uh, the project director and I think the financial officer as well. And also a copy will go to the program specialist, so we'll be aware of it as well. There's two different flavors of an invoice dispute. One is non-payable and one is payable. The non-payable dispute would be for things like an unauthorized signature, um, incorrect billing period, white out, white out is a no, no, um, and uh, incorrect total amount possibly depends on what um, what what that looks like. Payable, something that um, that the uh, accounting team would go ahead and process and fix on their side is um, they may adjust the invoice amount to available funds. <clears throat> so let's say you sent in an invoice with two thousand dollars in that personal section, but you only had a thousand dollar balance. Then they would probably just adjust that invoice and pay you, and then send you this dispute. Uh, to, to notify you. And the notification will include a budget summary so you can um, confirm what our system shows. So this is a um, snapshot of a non-payable dispute. In this case, um, it's an unauthorized signer, which is, um, that's, that's a typical problem in a typical um, non-payable dispute. This is a payable dispute, and um, like I said, the uh, on this one, the claimed amount was 16,644, and uh, the balance was available was only 16,294. So they adjusted the amount and then went ahead and processed the invoice and then sent a dispute. Here's another example of a budget summary report. Um, and the dispute goes to the program specialist as well. And in fact, when they're approving the invoice, the first thing that happens 
uh, when your invoice comes in, it's sent to the program specialist and that specialist reviews what you've submitted and either approves or denies it. And at that point, and then at the dispute point, um, you know, we'll look at what your balances are and your trends and try to help guide you on maybe you may need to move some money. Let's say in this case, if your um, your invoices are primarily from operating, you're almost out of uh, operating funds, then uh, we may you know ask you, do you think you need to move some money over from the personal section over to the operating? Uh, kind of try to be proactive on it. OK, another question, typical question is how do I claim additional expenses on a past 201? Um, you can either include it on your next 201, but I would recommend that you do an additional 201 uh, and, and that's one of the drop downs on the invoice form. Uh, what what type of uh, invoice are you submitting in additional and then just put in the amount that you are claiming, not the entire amount for both um, uh, invoices. All right, at this point, uh, are there any questions? We had uh, one question in the chat that I'm sure uh, other people probably were curious about is, uh, do we need to attach any invoices or supporting documents with the reimbursement request? No, no supporting documents. You're operating off of your ledger and um, you uh, just complete the invoice, the 2-201 and submit that one um, through the email. If there are any other questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Or we got one more in the chat. Um, what if in one invoice alone will be the full granting request? Then that would be your final invoice, your first and final. So um, you would have a choice uh, whether you wanted to mark it as your final because being your final invoice is kind of a one way ticket. Um, so if it's, you know, prior to the close of the grant, I would probably go ahead and submit it as a reimbursement. And then, um, you know, that gives you time to reevaluate in case there was an error or or that you could always send in a uh, a final invoice later, which um, one of the things I failed to mention was uh, you need to submit an invoice uh, for each invoice period, whether you have reimbursements or not. So, you know, at the end of June is the end of the first quarter and you don't have any reimbursements uh, needed, then you would submit a 2-201 for requesting zero, basically. Can I clarify that a little bit, Al? Pardon me? Um, can I clarify that a little bit? Sure. So basically, if you only have one expense, your $60,000 or whatever it was that you were granted, and it's one reimbursement because you purchased one um, high frequency um, communications equipment, then you would still continue to submit your reimbursement forms when they're due. But you would just continue, you would put that there's nothing on there. You would put zero. And then for the one that you do want to get reimbursed for, you would su submit that one. I don't know if that clarified it a little bit better. Did that help? OK. She says yes, that makes sense. OK. Uh, our next question from Sherry Lang. She says, if we have not received our sub award, when should we expect to receive it? Uh, it should should be coming shortly. Um, this is the end of the fiscal year for the state, so it's kind of the the perfect storm time period. So, but um, 
I would expect to see them here pretty soon. So actually, um, the sub awards are it's a reimbursement. So you will not receive the actual funding until you request a reimbursement. But no, you should were... be receiving your award letters very shortly if you haven't already. Uh, next question from Vicki Osborne. So are we using the invoices as a progress report? Cindy, you want to answer that? Sure. So the progress report, there's only one progress report that is due at the end of the performance period. So um, I believe, Al, can you remind me when that performance period ends? Is it December 31st of 2023? October. October 31st, 2023. So that's, we will be sending out emails to everyone um, to uh, provide you a progress report uh, that needs to be completed and submitted back to us. And that will be due um, November, the end of November, I believe. So you should be receiving sometime mid next year an email from us on that progress report and how to submit it. But um, the invoices are not your progress report. Um, Thank you, Cindy. Scott Milner wanted to know, does PSC1 stand for Public Safety Communications Grant 1? Uh, yes, I, I'm going to say yes on that. It's uh, the uh, acronym that was attached to that grant funding. So PSC1 actually is, yeah, it's like Al said, it's public safety communications for PSC. The one probably, you know, it doesn't signify that there's going to be a second one. We cannot guarantee that there's any going to be any more funding for this, but um, each grant program that we have here at Cal OES does need an acronym, and that was just what was chosen. There's no significance to it, but yes, the PSC does count for uh, public safety communications. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, Daniel Goldstein asks, once we receive the sub award, are we allowed to place the order with the vendor? I'm assuming, Daniel, you mean once you receive your award notification? Are they allowed to place the order with the vendor? Uh, yes, you um, you want to you want to you want to receive your uh, sub award approval before you do any expenditures. That's for sure. Um, and then once you're approved, you're uh, you're all set. You're ready to go. Uh, Teresa Uka wants to know: Is the award letter something we need to sign and return, or is it our docu or is it that our documentation that we move forward and can order equipment? You'll receive an award letter and uh, part. Uh, most most of your application documents that uh, were submitted and approved. So it's a package that you'll receive, and the sub award letter is obviously the the uh, official formal letter that approves you for the grant. Thank you, Al. Daisy uh, Tanuma, I believe we did answer this. Asked if we have submitted our quarter invoice and uh, reimbursement request. For the full amount, do we still need to continue submitting quarterlies? Uh, I believe we said that yes, we would just continue to submit them for zero dollars requested, correct? Correct, unless um, unless you submitted a final invoice, then that would indicate that you're done with the grant. No more invoices would be expected from you. Uh, thank you. Our Jim Jim Marchetti asked, are the award letters sent via email or postal service? Um, they're going to be received email. I don't believe they mail them out anymore. So they'll be sent out to the project director on your um, uh, project contact list, the uh, 2-102. You listed um, the project director and the financial officer. So each of those uh, officials would would receive a copy. Thank you. Next question 
Uh, Scott Ricker asks, just to confirm, we will go ahead and purchase the approved equipment with agency funds, and then we would put in uh, the a request with the 201 reimbursement form. Yes. That's yes. Correct. Yes. Uh, next question, when is the first reimburse reimbursement form going to be due to Cal OES? So the first uh, invoice period is April 1st through June 30th. That's the first quarter of the grant. And then July is your invoicing period. So you want to get your invoice in within that time period, July 1st through July 31st. Thank you. Crystal Harland asks, will Cal OES require governing board of approval to accept the grant before the grant agreement is awarded and executed? Um, once you get the grant approval, you've been approved. Your, um, your, your approvals on your side are already completed. I mean, we're we're not going to. Um, this is what the, the form that was required as part of your application, the certificate of assurance of compliance, the form uh, 2-104 is this. Right. So your, your certificate of assurance is basically assuring that your, um, you've gone through your board, your board has approved and your one of your board members has signed that certificate of assurance. So uh, the answer would be yes. Cal OES is going to require the board of approval. Through the 104. Yes. Um, which everyone here should have already submitted, and so that should be resolved. Um, Next question from Tamara Witcher. Is there a way to follow up with someone if we do not receive the sub award approval? Uh, it was said earlier these are still going out. Um, if you have not received it yet, they are coming very, very soon. I would say that the actual um, award letters probably will not come out until June, so um, probably mid June, if not sooner, but uh, we actually have until June 30th to get them out. So um, they have been submitted for our um, our um, accounting department. So they are all in the process of getting out. So if you haven't gotten anything by the end of, I don't know, um, May, June, go ahead and email the HF communications email box and just call up with us and just say, hey, I haven't received it yet. What's the status? We have no problem, um, you know, giving that inf information to you. Yes, any questions uh, of any kind concerning this grant should be sent to the uh, HF communications at calios.ca.gov, which all of you have been uh, interacting with. Uh, next question from Joselito Sori. Uh, is there a form to request transfers between budget line items? Yes, that is uh, the form 2-223. It is the second half of this presentation. We're going to cover it in length here momentarily. Uh, next question from Mary Heath. Is this grant funded with state funds, federal funds, and do we need to complete an EHP? It's it's funded with state funds. Um, and we don't require an EHP. Okay. Uh, next question from Scott Milner. Is the Codan and or Baird equipment readily readily available uh, or should we expect to encounter long back order supply chain delays? We cannot answer that question. That is a question you would have to ask the vendors directly. We, we do not have any contact with them. Yeah. Can we restrict the questions to um, the invoicing process? Yes, if, if you have any questions that aren't related to these forms, please email us at the, uh, the email we stated earlier, hfcommunications at calos.ca.gov. We'll be happy to answer them shortly, but due to the time constrictions, we'd like to keep the questions just to the forms today. And it looks like that may be the last of the questions, unless anybody has any. Now is your time. All right, thanks. A lot of good questions. 
Um, the next section is modifications, and uh, that would be changes to your grant subaward agreement. Uh, the goals of the presentation are to understand how to make those changes and to review the forms and process needed to do the modification. Uh, the grant subaward modification form is a 2-223. Uh, basically, it's the official process to make changes to the approved budget and or other functional components of the subaward. Uh, always get the latest version, uh, which you would want to go here to caloes.ca.gov. On the right, Cal OES Divisions. Scroll down to Grants Management. Helpful links and click, click on Forms. Um, scroll down to the 2-223, the Grant Subaward Modification Form. Same location as the invoice form, uh, uh, but uh, in this case, it's a 2-223. This is what the form looks like. Uh, once again, the top section is going to be uh, your agency information, the grant sub award number, modification number. Is this your first one, second one? Uh, the grant sub award performance period, which is 4 1 22 through 10 31 23. Uh, the sub recipient name, and then once again, critical, get the payment mailing address that um, that we have on file that you submitted with the original application or changed with a previous modification. I think we'll go through those sections. The grant subaward modification, you want to do this whenever you're changing key personnel um, and authorized signers, your mailing address. Uh, and in operational or equipment changes and budget changes. This is the 102. This is the form that you listed your key personnel. Uh, the grant sub award director and the financial officer are the key signers on the, the next form, which is a 103. So those are critical um, critical authorized signers. So any changes to this contact information form, you would do a modification. And that would most likely lead to this is a 2-103 that lists the authorized signers that you've um, supplied us. The uh, grant sub award director and the financial officer those are the first two positions on the previous form and then any other signers. So if you notice on this form, there's a programmatic side and a financial side. The same person can't sign on both. You can only sign on one. So this is what we're going to refer back to. This is what's going to be in our system for authorized signers. Um, if you're going to change your equipment, um, you most likely we'll need to do a modification check with your program specialist and this will probably lead to not only a budget update but a budget narrative where you explain in detail um, your budget uh, budget changes this is an example of a budget page uh, this is the personnel section and basically this is um, some, uh, someone is adding a line item on this modification. Uh, executive director salary, yearly salary is 80,000, and then they're claiming 10% of that time on this grant, which yields 8,000, 8, 8, 8, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then this is uh, on the right, is the budget page and then on the left is the modification page. So this section of the uh, modification page, the 2-223, uh, it lists the 
grant information, which this grant is 2021 funds and the PSC1 uh, acronym. And uh, initially the grant was awarded uh, for $20,000 and it was all in the operating section. So this is indicating that you are now adding a line item in the personnel section. You're moving 8,000 out of the operating into the personnel. And then the lower section, the revised allocation is indicating your new allocations of $8,000 in the personnel and then 12,000 in the operating with the total. The total remains the same, 20,000. The proposed change section cancels itself out. Uh, so that should always be zero. Um, additional forms may be needed depending on what style of modification you need. So contact your program specialist and review with him what um, what you what you need to do, what your goals are with the modification and and they'll guide you. The timeline for a modification is uh, you submit it, it goes to your program specialist for a review. If he has any problems or uh, notices anything, uh, he'll send it back to you for corrections. And then when he gets it back, he'll send it to the unit chief. The unit chief does a final check and then sends it over to grants processing. Grants processing then will send out an approval letter to the subrecipient. Uh, and that process takes about two weeks. Final reminders. Reach out to your program specialist at any time uh, and use them at a, as a guide to discuss any changes that you may need and use the current forms. Any questions? We have a question in the chat. Uh, Alavia Hilda, she asks, do we need to have the approved modica modification before submitting an invoice? Yes. Yes, your modification. So if you're submitting an invoice, if you're doing the modification so you can submit the invoice reflected through the changes, then yes, you want the modification submitted, you want it approved, and then submit the um, the invoice after that. And one thing I forgot to mention was if you're doing a um, signature authorization change, then the modification form, you want to sign that with the new um, signatures, not the old ones. The old ones are theoretically gone, so you you want to you want to sign that form with the uh, the new uh, changes. Thank you. Um, a couple of people asked, who is the program specialist or who do we find out who it is? The program specialist is me, Nick Martin, uh, but you should still contact us through the HF communications at caloes.ca.gov uh, email inbox and I will follow up with you there. Uh, the next question, when submitting a, a person of contact change, do I have to up to update the information the 2-223 only, do I also attach a new 2-102 form with it? So, um, number one, if you if you if if you actually need to do a modification, then please follow up um, with uh, contacting us on the HF communications email so we can uh, consult with you. But in th in that case, you're sounds like you're doing key personnel changes, so you would need the 223, the 102, the key the, uh, key personnel form. And then if that involves a signature change, then you would do the 2-103. And I think that would be it. But uh, I advise you to contact the uh, uh, contact us at the HF communications email. Any other questions? You can unmute yourself if you don't want to type it in the chat and feel free to ask. Going once, twice. Okay, I think that might be it for questions. 
Great. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time. Um, and uh, always use the most current form. Uh, reach out to us for any assistance or guidance that uh, you need, any questions you have. And um, thank you very much. Yeah, day, I just want to say on behalf of Cal OES, thank you very much. We're really excited to work with you all. So like Al said, just go ahead and email us at hfcommunication at caloes.ca.gov if you have more questions. We have Nick that is um, he's, uh, uh, looking at the inbox daily, so he responds really quick to you. If not, it would be Al or myself that could respond as well. So um, we, we aim to try to respond really quick. And with that said, thank you all and have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thank you.